Yom Tov, good day. I'm Stephen Bruck. You're watching Messianic Moment Ministries, and thank you for being here on this seventh day of August 2020. This being Friday, we're going to be doing the Tover portion that we read, and in this parasha, which is the Hebrew for portion, Moses again repeats to the people the same warnings he has already given and will continue to give throughout this book. Today he's confirming that so long as the people obey God, that God will bless them mightily and go before them to conquer the peoples in the land of Canaan, which they are about to enter. But if after conquering the people there, the people adopt the worship and gods of the people they conquered, then God will come against them. And he reminds them of how God came against Abraham and Dathan in the rebellion of Korach. Moses says that God will send the hornet before them to drive out the people and weaken them and reminds them of all the good that God has done for them since leaving Egypt. He retells of the mighty works God performed in Egypt and throughout their travels in the desert and to have confidence that God will continue to do the same for them now. So not to fear the Canaanites or even the Anakim that are living in Canaan. Moses also tells them, not to become proud and think that their victory is from their own power, but remember that it was God who did it for them. He tells them they should not continue to be rebellious as they were at Horeb when they made the golden calf. And he relates how he had to plead with God not to destroy them, and how at that time God also separated the tribe of Levi to serve him. Moses ends this partial with the statement that so long as the people obey God, God will go before them and put the fear of them on all the nations they will face, and they will possess everywhere the sole of their foot touches. <clears throat> it's a little challenging sometimes to find something new to discuss in Deuteronomy because, well, Moses says pretty much the same thing over and over. But today there are two things that struck me, and the first it's when he tells the people that God will send the hornet ahead of them. Now, you got you got to know about this. The hornets in Israel are pretty mean. And they like to nest in caves, which is also where people under attack go to hide. So if there are aggressive hornets in a cave and you run in there to hide, you will be forced out into the battle real quickly. But what's interesting, and it was noted in my Chumash, is that the hornet was also the symbol of the Egyptian pharaoh Tafmiz III, I think that's how you pronounce it, who could have been the hornet God was referring to. Because if Pharaoh Tafmiz III attacked and raided Canaan, as pharaohs were wont to do in those days, then that would weaken the armies of the Canaanites, helping Israel to more easily conquer them. The second thing I found interesting, and when I read this passage, I recognized it immediately, is Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13 which says, and I'm quoting from the Complete Jewish Bible, So now, Israel, all that Adonai your God asks from you is to fear Adonai your God, follow all his ways, love him, and serve Adonai your God with all your heart and all your being, to obey for your own good the mitzvot and regulations of Adonai which I am giving you today. Do you see why I immediately recognize this? Yes? No? Let's look at Micah 6 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Now, we are constantly told that God is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. And here's proof of that what He requires from us has never changed. And it isn't blind obedience or sacrifices given exactly as we are told to do. It is an attitude of the heart, which causes us to do these three things. One, to act justly, which is the result of obeying God's instructions. Two, to be merciful, which is the result of treating others <clears throat> excuse me, as God tells us we should. And three, to walk humbly with God which is the result of loving God with all our heart and soul. 
God has never wanted automatons. He doesn't want us to obey him only from fear of reprisal. And he won't ever force us to love him. He gave us free will so we could decide to do as he instructs us to do or to reject his ways. And he tells us over and over, especially in this book, that when we do as he says, we will be blessed. And if we don't, well, <clears throat> then we'll be on our own in a cursed and fallen world where everyone is against us, which is essentially being cursed. <clears throat> so today's message is simple. Decide if you will be with God or against God. Look, you don't have to do every single commandment in the Torah perfectly, and you can even screw up now and then, even on purpose. God knows we are weak and easily led into sin. The one thing that you must do, though, in order to continue being blessed, is repent of every single sin, ask forgiveness in Yeshua's name, and try to do better each day. As I have often said, and will continue to say, we can never be sinless, but we can always sin less. Amen. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe, click the icon here for the YouTube, but go back also to my website. Click the subscribe button in the right-hand margin there. Share these messages with others, help this ministry grow, and I always welcome your comments. So until next time, the Hitrot and Shabbat Shalom.